What I thought I'd explain today is the relationship of the aftershock activity that we've been experiencing um, around the Christchurch metropolitan area since the 4th September uh, earthquake on the Greendale Fault uh, last year. Um, the aftershock activity uh, has been uh, widespread, especially to the southwest and south of the city, and uh, of course on the, f on the 22nd of February uh, resulted in a uh, larger event on what is now the newly discovered Littleton Fault. We're calling it the Littleton Fault for the moment, and uh, that's now got its own aftershock sequence continuing. In September last year, the uh, large earthquake that we experienced, 7.1 magnitude, um, initially ruptured a fault uh, north of the Greendale Fault, which is the red fault line that we see on this graphic from GNS Science. Um, this is a hidden structure, it doesn't reach the ground surface, but the epicentre of that main event was located where the large green star is. Um, that was followed in, uh, within a few seconds uh, with rupture along the Greendale Fault, which actually reached the ground surface to create a rupture trace uh, somewhere around 30 kilometres in length at the surface, but extending both to the east, as shown by the yellow dots here, and to the west, um, again with the yellow dots. Now, in green on this plot, you see the, um, the aftershocks that happened, some of the selected aftershocks that have happened s since the 4th of September. And um, you'll notice in particular that there is a significant concentration of aftershock activity uh, around the tip of the fault and over towards the southeast. Um, the reason that we get such a concentration of faulting around the tip or, or uh, aftershocks around the tip is that that's where the stress concentrations are. The movement on the fault uh, in September involved the north side moving to the east and the south side moving to the west and the amount of displacement at the surface, at the ground surface, uh, varied from about one metre to about five metres maximum back to about one metre at the eastern end. Now that creates a perturbation or a, a, a distortion in the rock at depth beneath the alluvium of the Canterbury Plains and it's in that zone in which the rock then continues to adjust the strain change or the stress change over a period of weeks and months following. And each of these aftershocks are taking place on uh, not only the main fault, but also on lots of subsidiary faults. And you can see that that zone extends right over towards the southwest area of the city, uh, Hallswell, Taitapu area. On the 20, 22nd of February, um, the new uh, earthquake occurred, an aftershock of magnitude 6.3 occurred on a new fault, the Littleton structure, indicated here by the yellow uh, dashed line again. Um, it's hidden beneath the surface, it doesn't have any surface trace that similar to what the Greendale Fault did, but we know that it's reached to within about a kilometre of the surface beneath the estuary and along the edge of the Port Hills adjacent to the city. The actual rupture during this earthquake was measured about eight kilometres in length and up and down the fault plain to a depth of about eight kilometres beneath the surface. We um, have subsequently seen a sub significant amount of aftershock activity in and around this new uh, rupture, this new fault plain rupture. And there's been a lot of large uh, magnitude four to five aftershocks, especially at the eastern end um, near Littleton and the end of, of um, uh, the peninsula at Godley Head. One of the reasons that we see a concentration of aftershock activity towards the tip of the fault at the east end will be because the rupture of the fault plain, which uh, is possibly as much as a metre and a half um, at uh, a kilometre or uh, more than a kilometre beneath the surface, um, puts a stress change on the fault plain around the tip and the aftershock activity tends to reflect the rock trying to progressively reduce that stress concentration. This is what tends to trigger these aftershocks. Um, we've also had, as, as you can see uh, towards the southwest end here, again a cluster of aftershocks uh, following the event on the 22nd of February, uh, again indicating that that's probably close to the end of the subsurface rupture area. There has been very little in the way of aftershock activity between the two faults, where the Greendale Fault 
steps over towards the Littleton structure. This suggests that the uh, stress concentrations have really been localised now into this Littleton area. We tend to think that a magnitude 7 earthquake ought to create uh, much more significant ground shaking in, in, in the region surrounding it than a magnitude 6.3. But the, the real answer to the question is that um, when you have a magnitude 6.3 earthquake immediately adjacent to the city, the levels of ground shaking that we experience will be significant um, and much higher than uh, were generated by the magnitude 7 earthquake well outside of the, the city central area. The other possible reason for that severe shaking is the very shallow location of the fault close to the ground surface and um, this fault may not have ruptured over many many millions of years and so it was very strongly locked and therefore when it did rupture it was accompanied by very high levels of ground acceleration. The ground accelerations that were experienced on the 22nd of February were uh, significantly higher than was experienced within the city from the 4th of September event. The Littleton Fault is actually uh, not a vertical structure, it's, it's inclined uh, towards the south at an angle of about 65 degrees to the horizontal. And another reason for the very severe ground shaking, for example in the uh, Red Cliffs and Sumner area, is because the Littleton uh, volcano slopes, the Port Hills, sitting above the fault plain, um, when the fault ruptured, a lot of the seismic energy came up immediately underneath the Port Hills. And the topography uh, focused some of that energy and uh, the people living in that area have experienced extremely strong ground shaking for that reason. Uh, at the same time, the fault uh, inclined away to the, to the south um, and very close to the ground surface adjacent to the estuary uh, released a lot of energy into the sediments beneath Christchurch City. Seismologists at GNS Science have been assessing the probability of continuing aftershocks in and around Christchurch and their assessment at this time is that a magnitude 5 event over the uh, coming period sits at about 1% per day and that will continue to diminish over time. So the longer we go, the less likelihood there is of that size aftershock occurring.